everyone, in today's video, I will be discussing why BMW Motorsport opted to use a lower sweep angle setup for the semi-trailing arms on the E30 M3 when they were campaigning it in Group A. Firstly, let's talk about why the E30 M3 had semi-trailing arms. Well, it's not for performance, I'll tell you that for sure, because the purpose of a semi-trailing arm is to allow for more luggage space and occupant room and they pose a disadvantage in the handling department as they tend to have too much alignment change during bump and rebound as the car is moving along the road. This is bad because it can cause the car to be unstable close to the limit and can also cause oversteer when you lift off the throttle mid corner as the suspension unloads. That is why for Group A competition, BMW Motorsport introduced a modified semi-trailing arm outer pickup point that reduces the sweep angle of the rear trailing arms. Hence, the camber and toe curves are reduced or for easier explanation, there is less alignment change with this setup and will greatly help in keeping the rear suspension from being unstable and unpredictable. Although there is no free lunches with this setup, as moving the pickup points also introduces lowering of the roll center and this makes the car roll more during cornering especially when the car's center of gravity is not lowered as well. This is not essentially considered a bad thing depending on how your suspension is set up. Let's say a rally car or a rally setup would benefit from this as the increased roll would help in loose surfaces when putting the power down with increased traction. Whilst in circuit racing, you would want the least amount of roll possible in order to lessen the lateral load transfer, hence giving you more available grip in the corners. Even though they introduced the decreased sweep angle configuration, but still retained the original configuration for circuit racing, as this enabled less roll, but again, introduces more alignment change, but BMW Motorsport accounted for this. That is why, to limit the amount of alignment change, they have reinforced the rear trailing arms in order to reduce flexing under load and by virtue limit the amount of alignment change as the suspension moves from bump to rebound. Although not a perfect solution for the 87 through 89 season, but still a very welcome compromise. In saying that, the reduced sweep angle configuration can still be used for circuit racing, but they have to be accompanied by a stiffer suspension setup in order to combat the increased roll, but would be unfavorable on bumpy circuits. But all of this would be rectified for the 90 through 92 season, the last years of the E30 M3 competing in DTM. Now what they did is that they kept the low sweep angle specification but added an adjustment to the outer semi-trailing arm pickup points in order to correct the roll center for circuit racing. This meant that they can fully utilize the lower sweep angle whilst not having the drawbacks of more roll. BMW Motorsport did not stop there as they further reinforced the rear semi-trailing arm setup in order to limit the flex. Again, as I said earlier, this was previously done to limit the alignment change to a minimum. The reason for adding upon the already reinforced setup was that BMW Motorsport felt that the previous reinforcements weren't adequate as the semi-trailing arms were flexing more than what they have expected. Now moving on, it's also worth noting that from the 87 through 92 season, BMW Motorsport also reinforced the rear cross member to limit the alignment change as well as to act as an additional reinforcement for the chassis. That's already beyond the scope of today's video. If you would like to like me to elaborate upon the main changes that were done from the 87 first iteration rear suspension setup to the 92 setup, then do leave me a comment down in the descriptions below. And if you like the video, do leave me a like, comment, and subscribe for more. Until next time, have a good one!